Hey folks, in this video we're going to be discussing query in Google Sheets. Uh, it is by far the most powerful function in Google Sheets. Uh, for me personally, once I learned it, my um, ability to work with data grew exponentially um, and it opened up um, more advanced concepts to me, such as you know standard SQL, uh, working with Google App Script, which is a JavaScript language, and uh, Python. So uh, Google Sheets uh, query is a really great way to get your, yourself to, uh, you know, query syntax. And it's just, it's just really awesome. I mean, you're gonna be able to do a lot of really cool stuff. And uh, what I wanna do in this video is introduce you to it. And then I am going to break down uh, the components of query in future videos. It is really robust. There's so many cool things that you can do with it. And uh, yeah, let's just jump into it. So we have um, a much larger data set, uh, similar to the one that we've been working with in previous videos here. Uh, we have about, I believe, like three or four years worth of data for um, the various people and countries in here. And if we wanted to do um, analysis on this data set, it would be it would be quite arduous to go line by line, to use like filters, to use, you know, sum ifs, to do all that type of stuff. It's possible, but uh, query is going to be um, the most effective way, in my opinion, to explore this data, visualize this data and, and report on this data. Uh, so my preference when I'm working in data environment is I like to construct intentional um, places where information uh, gets entered, stored, and then visualized. So sheet one is our data storage uh, sheet. And if we ever need to upload, update it, that is where those things will happen. Sheet two is going to be where we are going to explore and potentially visualize our information. So um, the way that we're gonna explore is by using query, which as you can see in the documentation is stating that it runs Google Visualization API query language. This is, um, this is very similar to standard SQL. So if you ever use like BigQuery or any other um, data science platform that enables you to use uh, SQL syntax, it is so similar to what you'll use in Google Sheets. Um, so basically you have two arguments in query, but that's a little bit misleading because the actual query itself opens up a range of possibilities. Like I said, this is a very robust function. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you a standard query and explore the components of query that you can leverage. And then in subsequent videos, I'm going to break down each component more granularly. Uh, so that you have a, a, a more foundational understanding of things that you can do in here. So the first thing that you need to do in query is you just need to enter in a data range. Um, so for our purposes, we're gonna keep it to this sheet um, and we are going to reference sheet one. Oops, sorry. Let's start over. We're gonna do query and then we're gonna go into sheet one and we are going to highlight all of our cells or all of our columns. And then we are gonna move on to our second argument using a comma. And then you'll note in the documentation, we begin our query statement with a double quote, and we also end our query statement with a double quote. Um, the way that I like to set up my, um, my functions is I like to put them on separate lines. So what I do when I use query is I enter in query, I enter in my data range, I enter in my comma and my double quote, and then I, I'm on a Mac, so I, I enter in a line break using uh, the command key and the return key at the same time. This is something that I do for readability. You don't have to do it this way, um, so you know do whatever's best for you, but that's the way that I structure it like this. It's you know just my preference. The way that you begin your query statement is using a select. Uh, the select enables you to um, input the parameters that you want. Um, so, you know, we have six columns of data. If I wanted to return all six columns, I could use an asterisk and that would pull in everything. Um, if I wanted to, I could just return column A or I could return column B 
or I could return column C, or if I wanted to, I could just return columns A and C. The select statement allows you to literally select what you want to pull in. For our purposes, I'm going to begin with select star or select asterisk just to show you what it looks like when you get results. Um, the next uh, statement that you might want to use in here is where. Where enables you to refine your select. So for our purposes, we have a list of names and we have some countries in here. We also have some dates and then we have some values. You can use where in various ways in order to say that you want to include or exclude things. Um, for our purposes, I'm going to say where A equals, and then I am going to type in Canada. So what we have currently told query to do is select everything where A equals Canada. And because we have a lot of data in here, I am going to use the limit statement in order to keep our results to 10 rows because I don't want to pull in, you know, I think there's like a couple thousand rows in here. So what we're going to do is we're going to get everything, meaning all six columns where A equals Canada, and then we're only going to get 10 results. I'm going to finish my statement with a double quote, and then I'm going to move into my optional argument, which enables you to uh, state whether you want your header rows at the top of the data set. I am going to enter in one uh, because I want my header rows and I am going to hit enter so that we can look at the results. So now you can see that we have 10 rows of data, right? That excludes the header rows. So you can see we have our count at 10. We have our header row up here and we're only seeing results where it's Canada. We are going to uh, explore that header row a little bit just so that you can see. If you enter in zero, you'll see that we won't have a header row. We'll just get 10 values in here. And then if we did uh, row two, you'll see that now we have this like weird concatenation going in there where it's taking row one and row two and combining that into a single header. I have literally never needed to do this in any capacity in my career. I typically default to one, uh, so that's what I would recommend you to do, but you do have that flexibility with this header uh, variable here, header argument in here. So um, in addition to uh, being able to select um, and, and stating what you wanna select and limiting it, you can also change the order. Um, so if you want to, you can do order by, and I'm going to order by column C because that is a date. Um, so when I enter that in here, oops, sorry, this is okay. So this is actually a good learning moment. You see how we're, we have all these red lines here. The reason for this is because, um, the order of your statements within query is, is, uh, is like a requirement. It needs to be in a specific order. So in this in this instance, I'm getting an error because order by needs to come before limit in here. So we're gonna do this just so that we can read the error. Um, the error messages with query are not very user friendly um, if from the beginner perspective. So you're gonna start working with query and you might do things and then you'll get error messages like this where you kind of like there's an indication here that there's something wrong with order but it doesn't explicitly spell out for you that order appeared in the wrong for lack of a better word order relative to the limit statement right like a, a more helpful error message would have said order by needs to come before limit and it would have some type of like you know like message in here kind of like this that is like order by limit select where group order limit all that type of stuff unfortunately you won't get that um, but we will be reviewing kind of the order of operations for your your statements in here so what i'm going to do 
is I'm gonna highlight order. I'm gonna delete it. Now you can see it's working fine. I'm gonna add in a row. I'm gonna paste it in there. And now you can see we don't have this issue in here. So when you say order by, it will default to ascending or descending, or sorry, it will default to ascending, but you have the ability to order by ascending or descending. So you just have to say order by the column and it will default to ascending. If you want it to be descending, you can enter in a DESC, which stands for descending. And now what we should see is we should see the maximum values in the range in here, which I think should be like 2022 or 2023. Yep, so now you can see we are ordering by column C in descending order and some of these values changed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna hit Command Z, pay attention to this column here, you'll see that the values change. Boom, yep, so you can see. Um, the other thing that you can do is you can run math functions. Um, so what we, we could say in here is we could do select A and B, right? And we're gonna order by A and B, and we're gonna get rid of this limit in here. And now you'll see that we get every instance of everyone in the data set. So we have like multiple instances of Craig, multiple instances of Ava, multiple instances of Becca, all that type of stuff. Um, what we could do is add in, so I think inventory is column D, right? So now you can see we have the inventory for every instance of anyone who has a country labeled as Canada. So what we're gonna do now is we are going to sum column D, and then anytime you do some type of mathematical function in query, you need to have something to aggregate it to. And the way that you aggregate things is by using group by. So now you can see that those red lines disappear because I have appropriately put group by in here. I am going to order by A and B. And now what we should get is a much cleaner list that gives us the inventory amount for every person who has a country distinction of Canada. So now that we have some values in here, we may not wanna order by the country we, and the person, we might wanna order by the sum. And if we just enter it in as sum D like that, you'll see it's going from ascending with this value being the lowest and this value being the highest. But if we wanted to, we could order by descending, which will give us the highest value at the top and the lowest value at the bottom. The last thing that I wanna to touch on in this video is the um, label by statement. So one of the challenges with query is that much like in our array video, all of these values exist in cell A1. So for example, if I tried to delete Matt from cell B2, you can see I'm not able to do it. That's because it doesn't really exist right now. It, it, it exists in cell A1. Um, so for example, when we have this sum inventory, that might not be the header that you want, but if you tried to type in inventory total here, you'll get an error message because it, the, the query array is trying to overwrite a value in C1 and it won't allow you to do that. So if you do wanna rename your headers, you can use the label by, or the label option. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to take sum D and I am going to call it inventory total. And now you can see it pushes that change to um, the column that is summing inventory. If you wanna have more than one label statement, you need to separate it by a comma. So for example, if I don't put my comma in there and I just put column A and I say region instead of country, you can see I'm getting an error message here. The reason I'm getting that error message is because each of the, the statements and label need to be separated by a comma. And now you'll see that region has put in there. 
And if we want to, we just add another comma and we put in B and then we can put person. And now that's changed. So there's so much that you can do in query. And this is just a broad introduction for what this function allows you to do. Um, in subsequent videos, I'm going to be uh, breaking down uh, various components related to the select statement, various components related to the where statement, so that you can see all of the various ways that you could apply this, um, this function within your workflows. Additionally, I have a video that will be um, demonstrating how to build a dashboard environment leveraging query. Um, and I think it's exceptionally helpful. I've always received uh, positive feedback about my application of query, and I hope that it will be uh, helpful to you as you approach anything that you want to do in a spreadsheet. Um, so uh, please check out my other stuff. Feel free to leave me some comments down below. And uh, yeah, best of luck on your data journey.